Here's what you need to know about First Universalist Church. We are a radically welcoming congregation. It doesn't matter if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're lesbian, if you're bisexual, if you're transgender. In this church, we are not at all interested in tolerating diversity. We are deeply interested in celebrating variety. I always knew I was different. I grew up in a small town in Indiana in the 1970s, and I always knew I wasn't like all the other girls. For 39 years, I was married and knew there was something not comfortable. I knew that growing up that, um, that I was special and that I was different. I spent about age 16 to 30 worrying that I was a lesbian, knowing I was a lesbian, not able to embrace being a lesbian. I was terrified. I'll never forget going to a dance with a girlfriend and seeing the hatred in people's eyes. Our 13-year-old son had called someone a fag at school and our 16-year-old had just come out to us. We didn't want our family to hurt their older brother. That was a semester of Liz the Les and getting slammed into lockers and um, I don't remember any of their names now because they don't matter anymore. What kind of things like do they tease you about? Being a boy and having long hair, mm -hmm. having two moms. I've had people kind of that I've run into that have been like, that's just weird. Or, you know, well, who plays, you know, the dad role? I think that's the weirdest conversation I've ever had, which is, yeah. well, who's the dad? Well, there, there isn't one. one. <laughs> uh, because I was interested in theater. Um, I had to listen to play gay, theater fag, drama queen, things like that. So like, everything I did was, was different, that's why I felt different, but I, I didn't know who I was. When my first brother died, the church that we grew up in and were very, very active members in, uh, and my mother is still a member of after 60 years, did not allow us to have a funeral for my brother. At the end of the year, when they did the names that are to have intercessions for them, uh, my brother's name was left off the list. It's almost like he hadn't existed. I was Catholic, and uh, there was no way that, if I knew then that I was gay, that I dared come out because I believed that I should date men, and I should be feminine, and I should Ex you know, do the things that were expected. I knew that there was nobody like me in the whole world. I was alone. I also knew that if there was nobody else in the whole world that had the same feelings I had, then the feelings I had were wrong. And there was no one I could talk to about the way I was feeling. Not my family, not my minister, no friends, nobody. I was alone in the world. I think when I think back about growing up as a gay teenager, the thing that really hits me is that uh, how, uh, how much of my life and energy I spent trying to be things for other people, how much of my own self, my own personality, my own sexuality, I just kept so hidden and so wrapped up and so tight because I was so scared to let it out. I was never given an opportunity to uh, To be honest about who I really am. What I didn't find out until I got older was that meant that I didn't really have my own identity. I was trying hard to fit into all those molds and conform to everybody else. So I just started to pretend I was somebody I wasn't. And after a few years, I actually believed what I was pretending. And I wish now I had told more people what was going on. I remember when I was first coming out, it was in college, and I didn't know anything about gay or lesbian people, or even if it was an option, but once it was there for me, I realized, oh, that's me, that's, that's who I am. I will say that coming out for me was um, both freeing and very frightening. And my mom was great. She, um, she said, as long as you're happy. My dad, on the other hand, was totally not happy <laughs> and uh, blamed my mom. 
I wanted a life like my sister had. She had a, a loving husband. She had a couple kids. They had a yard, a dog. Those are the things I wanted. And I thought that I couldn't have that if I was a lesbian. And now, fast forward 30, 35 years, I've got a loving partner. I've got three kids, two of them here. I think that one of the important things that happens later is that from this world that's so small, that is built just out of fear and um, a sense that you can't let anybody in, that you start to find people, and you will, who you can allow into that world. There were times when I didn't think I wanted to live another day. And and if I hadn't, I'd have missed so much. I don't feel like a target anymore. There's a whole world of love waiting for you. As soon as you find it, it truly does get better. In fact, it gets pretty amazing. There are resources out there and there are welcoming places for you. One place I have found is First Universalist Church. We were looking for a place that could support all of us and teach our children that Everyone belongs, no matter what your sexual orientation or your family configuration. For more than 40 years, our Unitarian Universalist faith tradition has been standing up for the rights of our GLBT brothers and sisters. It has been immensely important to us to be welcoming congregations. We were looking for a place that would accept us and provide us with the kind of support we wanted, both for our marriage but also as we raised our family and First Universalists really provided that. It's a large church but it feels like such a wonderful family. It's just so amazing to walk in to this building and feel the love and the compassion and the commitment and the acceptance of all these wonderful people. I don't belong to a church anymore that that wouldn't let me take communion now I belong to a church that they don't love me for what I am they love me for who I am we all need to be respected and and have a fair chance to be who we are I know there's a place for you here in my church I also know that there's um, Unitarian Universalist churches around the country and around the world I feel finally that I can be who I want to be and I'm accepted which is a wonderful feeling we humans are a vast garden of flowers, each different, each beautiful, each priceless. And it's on that principle and with that passion that we gather as a church community. You are so welcome here. There are two things that matter in this life. One is love. The other is being who you are. And at First Universalist Church, you will be loved. You are loved and you can be who you are. It gets better. Yeah.